wrong. Pingy, 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 pingy. Pingy, 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 ping. I'm ready to start. Welcome to Smartless. Smart. Hey, yes, yeah, so Will is joining us uh, from over the pond there in London. It looks like yeah. you went ahead and treated yourself to a nice, uh, at least a one-bedroom, maybe a two-bedroom suite. Dude, hey, look, who's counting other than you? I mean... <laughs> yeah, it looks uh, looks like you're doing pretty well. Yeah, sitting in a wingback. I'm sitting in a wingback, you know, I felt like this is the chair that I've always deserved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? And yep. um, You're also taught, you kind of, you sound like you're keeping it down because yeah you're trying to stay quiet because no, the, not, the kids no. are asleep or and, you know no you know why it's kind of echoey in here yeah so i'm just trying to be like not as echoey oh oh because you probably have uh hardwood floors in that nice uh hotel and, sure do. and high ceilings right sure do yeah 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 so i'm over here visiting some friends and then oh. of course i'm going to the football on sunday which oh. I'm really excited about. The NFL is having a game on this this <sighs> weekend are, over. They're trying to expand the league. You are something. You are something else. I um I'm going to see Liverpool um play West Ham up at Anfield, their their home ground in Liverpool on Sunday. Chappie and I are going, and uh, I'm very <laughs> very excited. Uh -huh. I can't. Would you ever consider getting each other rings, you and Chappie? <laughs> 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 Maybe just tattoo it around your ring finger. You know who uh -huh. we went and saw yesterday? We went last night and saw Johnny Vaughn, my buddy who I've mentioned, who's uh, on the radio over here, and he's a great talent. Oh, yeah. And uh, so I went and joined the 407 thing with his crew. Everybody from Gab the Woodman Woods to uh, Dr. Santa Templeton to Big Sai and Little Sai. It was just a... Uh, and then we went out for um nice Chinese food uh, dinner at, uh, at, a, at a casino. Oh. So... Yeah, how about wow. that? Like a betting yeah, casino? It was. A, it was. A, yeah, it was. A, it was very. It was different, but it was great. This guy hosted us. It was amazing. The incredible uh, Chinese food restaurant in the in the basement I'm of in. this casino. I'm yeah. In. Um, Good times, about, man. I, I can't picture. Uh, look at Jason's face. I know. I can't picture um, anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Any, I can't. I can't picture gambling anywhere other than Vegas. So they have casinos there. Does it feel like Vegas? They got casinos everywhere, Sean. Really? Yeah. You ever heard of Macau? I uh, I'm gonna be going to uh, Vegas in a, a a few weeks here, and I'm uh, anticipating not going to the tables at all, um, yeah. because I don't drink anymore, and I feel yeah. like I need yeah. to be um, yeah. inebriated to enjoy the mindlessness of gambling and the the the, 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 the fear. No, Sean. Sean, Sean can do it at breakfast. He's, yeah, is that true? Um, I could do it. Oh, my God, oh. I love it. I Wait, love Sean, it. are you one of those at, a, like, a buffet? When, uh, do you sit at the table, fill out the bingo card and everything? Yeah, and then I go to Vegas. <laughs> then he goes to Vegas. I, I went with Sean once. You remember that? Years ago, we went to, to Vegas. Oh, oh, my God. That was a long time ago. Do you remember that? That, that was, was, like, so 2002. Was this after Istanbul, you guys? <laughs> uh, it was before, before. Istanbul. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, well before. Well, I, I went to Vegas but, once. I had, but but yeah. maybe after Venice. Oh boy, because we yeah. had Venice, Italy too. Does Chappie yeah. know about Sean? Is he okay with him? I'm trying to keep him under Will, wraps right Will now. Will and I have <laughs> tattooed rings, <laughs> toe rings. But toe Sean, rings. I saw Sean one time at the blackjack table just go nuts, and he was splitting <laughs> and doubling down. And mm -hmm. at one point, he just had he was playing like an eight hand thing. It was so many splits and doubles. Yeah, but it was two dollar units, right? It was just no, a two dollar sure table. Wasn't. Yeah, no, it was great. And and that one time, I think it was that time or another You won? Time, yeah, I kept winning. I was really drunk and I was yeah. really young. See, that's what I mean. I don't think you can win when you're sober. No. And yeah, because you make horrible choices. Well, you make then... pragmatic decisions and that's that's uh, sort of at odds with uh, successful gambling, I think. Yeah. And I anyway, I had like 300 bucks or 200 bucks left or something like that. And I turned it into like 10,000 bucks and I gave it all Jesus. the way to the people at the table. The people. Yeah, uh -huh. like the Robin Hood, that... like the like, <laughs> just like Robin Hang Hood. On a second, if you work for the IRS, if you work for the IRS, just <laughs> uh, it was nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
How are you with the How are you with the jet lag? Can you uh, I'm adjust okay. really it kinda, fast? It kind of hit me. I actually left dinner a little bit early because the jet lag kind of hit me in the between the eyes, and I was like, guys, I got to go to sleep. I'm. Yeah. But I can tell you this: I'm really excited to go to my first. As you guys know, I, I do love uh, Liverpool, and I yes. love what they call football over here. So yes. I'm excited to go. It's a big thrill. And Jay is a sports fan. You can appreciate how cool yes. it is to go to a new. Yeah, stadium. they make sports fans look bad here in the states because hey, you guys got the or they guys. You're 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 one Thank of you. them. They they, they, they all the songs that you sing oh, the songs and like are incredible. It's, just, it's yeah. real good fan stuff. All well, I'd be into that. It's super super fun and it's a great uh, environment. I've only been to one match over in Europe and that was in Spain a few years ago. But I haven't been here and I'm so excited, and I love the football. And I'm glad I'm saying football because it's reminding me. Uh oh, here we go. It's reminding oh, nice. me. Going with the guest, watch this. You know, nice our guest today. I'm so He's excited because so I just want to get to him. This uh, guy will. Our guest okay. today uh -huh. is an incredible entrepreneur. Mm, mm. Um, he's uh, he's he's French? a philanthropist. Mm. He's involved in all sorts of businesses, from uh, media consulting to management to uh, he make uh, to blenders uh, to yeah. sports apparel. Oh, uh, blenders! Uh, to team ownership. This is a guy who's done so much, and it started a lot of it started because he had so much success on the George football Foreman? field. Oh. And, you know, you talk about people who do amazing things, and then you talk about guys who are went in the first round of the NFL draft, who played three seasons in this Buffalo, football. I'm gonna get twice excited. led the league in touchdowns, voted to four consecutive Pro Bowls, I'm in this. Uh, won a Super Bowl, and also... I think he got really well-known for his incredible, what they called the Beast Quake. What? Touchdown run what? during the 2010-2011 NFL playoffs. He rushed 67 yards <laughs> while breaking nine tackles, considered one of the greatest NFL runs of all time. He's an all-time great. He's an all-time great guy. And he's also, more importantly, my friend, you guys, it's Mr. Marshawn Lynch. No way. Hey, Marshawn. Marshawn, good morning. Marshawn. <laughs> What's going on? Oh, my God. <laughs> Marshawn, can I ask you a question? Why do you spend so much time with this guy, Will Arnett? What happened? Does he have photos on you or something? You guys are so close. It's the nah, weirdest couple hell, in man. all of Hollywood. Nah, man, you did. I told him like, if you ever, if you ever call my phone or bang my line, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it work. Cause he gave me an opportunity to do some shit that I ain't never done before. So anytime he hit my phone, I'm, yeah, you know I mean, I'm coming through phone. So that's just for, for forever in perpetuity. He's got you as a as a, a guy throwing favors, <laughs> for sure. Because I want to tap. Can we know that. what that was or no? No, nah, Murderville. Mm. Yeah, a lot of people yeah. don't realize how hilarious Marshawn is. Yeah, because they think of him as like a football, you know, icon. And I'm like, this is a funny dude. Um, and I'm so lucky, you know, I'm so happy that you do return my calls. And and, you know, Marshawn, we've never really talked about football like in a way or like how you started i we think about it over the last few years we've talked about so much other weird stuff honeymoon and, and all we that went, other oh, kind of stuff well we went we covered the world cup uh last year we did this thing together uh and we never talked about how you started in pro well just in football in general and i guess i guess that's on me i should have asked but i'm asking now how did you what was your first uh, were you in love with football when you first started, when you were a kid? Like, what was the, what was the deal? What was your relationship mm -hmm. like with football starting out? Um, I mean, the relationship with football was uh, I was I was big on on playing it. Not too much of a uh, not too much of a fan of sitting down and watching it. Really, well, that's interesting. But when it came to it, it was like, yeah, if we had the the opportunity, every opportunity I had to play it, I was for sure getting down. But uh, I really wasn't, I wasn't, like I said, I wasn't big on sitting down and watching a game. It wasn't like no big ass tradition that we did where everybody come through on Sunday and watch the games or, you know, Monday nights wasn't like, we got to watch this Thursday night. Nah, I wasn't, you know, shit like that. And then the opportunity to go to college and, you know, play there, uh, I thought it would all end for me after high school. And then, you know, we started sending letters like, oh, yeah, you got opportunity to go to college and shit. That wasn't something that was, you know, really talked about in my household as well. So, really, I mean, it just all seemed, yeah, that shit all seemed like a little fairy tale or whatever, but. Which college did you end up going to? Uh, Cal University. Oh, yeah. California. Berkeley? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, the shit worked out for me in the long run, but. Yeah, for sure. When I, when I first found out, I'm like, hell no, nah, you want me, 
you want me to go to more school? Like <laughs> more voluntary school? school. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like nah, hell no, nah, I'm cool off that. But uh, uh-huh. I ain't gonna lie. Luckily, I had I had two cousins who was who was really into that shit. And, What's that uh, schoolwork? <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Really into schoolwork. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. They they I say they took on the jobs of the uh of the teachers yeah. by uh making sure I maintained uh it's hard. you know a reasonable uh grade point average to even be able to give college an opportunity. That's awesome. Wow. But then once it was like once I got there and you know, seeing what type of time they was on, what I had to do in order to uh, accomplish, you know, going to the next level then shit just made sense and it was like that shit clicked because now it was like oh i gotta i got a goal and i gotta do x y and z to accomplish this then let me just do what i need to do and see how far i could take me yeah do you remember the process of of getting used to getting hit like oh did you start playing football yes. so young? Oh, sorry were for you, him <laughs> where you don't where you don't remember it were you so young when you started that you don't remember it or 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 do you remember like because, uh, you know, I, I never was allowed to play football. My mom was British. She uh, she wanted me to play soccer. Um, and But I got this one part in a football movie where I actually got to put on pads and a helmet and I played like a, a defensive back or something. And this one, mm-hmm. this one, <laughs> this one take, uh, I had to tackle a guy. And I didn't know what to do with my head. I felt like, well, if my head hits that person's shoulder, it's going to break my neck. So what I thought would be smart to do is just to kind of shrug my shoulders up and (laughs) trap my helmet in the hole that the shoulder pads create so it's locked in there. Like a turtle. Um, Yeah, exactly. I'm not sure when you you did this this role in that movie, but you sound like you... You got that move from the little giants. Exactly. I'm just a small, <laughs> soft actor, uh, and they all laughed at me. Um, the movie was a comedy, thank God. That's but right, were- though, Jay. I I wouldn't think of that. That that is true. Like, because Marshawn, I'm I'm the opposite of you. I'd rather watch it than play it. And because uh, I played it when I was a kid, I was terrible. But I, I, I when I watch it, though, when I see the heads hit the bodies, I think the same thing. I was like, how does their neck? Yeah. yeah. So, do you remember that process? Was is there a learning curve that's painful on that, or were you too young? Most definitely. Uh, so, I mean, it, I got the I probably got the latest start out of because it, it was a group of us, and I mean, you know, it was more family, um, you know, close friends like in the neighborhood, and uh, you know, I think I was probably one of the later ones that started, maybe around the age thirteen. Yeah. So a few of them. Started maybe from age six, six, eight was around the normal time for them to start. So they were called like considered the veterans. Right. And, you know, one of my closest friends, rest in peace, we were doing hidden drills, angling, tackling. It's the biggest thing in football. And, uh, is what is angle tackling? Angling, tackling, tackling drill. What does that mean? Is you line up on opposite sides, put a cone out, and you come to a point. Where you have to earn your manhood. Uh-huh. It's uh-huh. How a lot of us. <laughs> sure. A lot of us. <laughs> where a lot of us seen it. And um, you know, he was a veteran. This was my my first year, my first year in full contact uh uh sports. And um somehow he he convinced me to go first, which, you know what I mean, was not a, a good idea. But uh <laughs> so he called go and we ran and we hit. Like like a couple of rams hitting each other with their horns, right? Yep. Except for I didn't lower my shoulders or my helmet, and I went in standing straight up, <laughs> like I was trying to give him a bear hug. Right, like Frankenstein. And he actually put his stomach exactly. He actually put his helmet right in my stomach. Ouch. And I'm talking about all the wind was blowed out. Like ooh shit, I don't know. And I had to make a decision because uh, as soon as the you know what I mean, as soon as he had hit me. All you can hear is the coaches like, man, what the hell y'all doing? Like, line up. And I'm like, line up? Like, oh, you want me to do this again? I'm laying down. Yeah. <laughs> you want me to do this again right after? I just, I'm like, <laughs> I don't know what to say. Because I want to tell them, like, hey, you know, I just went. But then, you know, everybody in line, they, hey, line up, line up. We got to line it up. Coach just said, like, so I'm like, oh, you want me to do this again? So it was like, oh, uh, hell no. I seen what you just did to me. And I was like, all right. Now this time, I'm gonna duck my shoulder and my head and, and run it into you. So the thing was, I was a little faster than him, so I was able to get to the point quicker than him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So in the midst of him lowering his helmet in his shoulders, I had already been lowered in. 
smashing. Bam! Coach is like, oh, okay, uh, the little rookie got something to him. Mm-hmm. Line up again. And now is he's calling all his veterans to the front of the line. And now he want to see the rookie hit with all the veterans. And so it was a thing of like, oh, this is just what you got to do in order mm-hmm. to be, you know, a hitter on the team. Those are the people who get all the praise, all the cheerleaders make little go number, you know what I mean, whoever your number is. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, shit. So if I become a hitter, then I could be one of them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then, I mean, you know, my, my first position, I play offensive line. So that's where all my little, oh. I guess my toughness and all that, ain't afraid to hit somebody and then, uh, you know, as much as, so for y'all who don't know, I'm a, I'm an offensive player. Yeah. But my mentality is defense. Mm-hmm. And we will be right back. Smartless is brought to you in part by GoodRx. Cold and flu season is an unfortunate reality. But if you're feeling under the weather, GoodRx is here to help with big savings on prescription cold and flu meds and tons of information to help you and your family stay healthy this fall. With GoodRx, you can instantly find discounts, compare prices, and save up to 80% at the pharmacy. All you need to do is search for your medication on the GoodRx website or app and show your discount at the pharmacy. It's that easy. GoodRx is accepted at all the major pharmacies in your neighborhood, including CVS, Walgreens, Rite Aid, Bonds, Walmart, Sam's Club, and many more. And remember, GoodRx is not insurance, but it works whether you have insurance or not. Even if you have insurance, GoodRx may beat your copay price. For big savings on cold and flu meds, plus discounts on your everyday prescriptions, go to GoodRx.com slash smartless. Be sure to use our URL so they know we sent you. That's GoodRx.com slash smartless. Smartless is sponsored by BetterHelp. So it's that time of the year. It's the end of the year. You know, the holidays. Some people may struggle with seasonal blues. Uh, you know, some people have like family stuff that they don't want to address and it kind of brings them down. So, you know, you have to show up, as they say, for Thanksgiving and show up for Christmas with the family. And there's, you know, a lot to argue about, a lot to have anxiety about. But you know what helps with all that? If you talk to somebody, a therapist. This time of year can be a lot, and it's natural to feel some sadness or anxiety about it. But adding something new and positive to your life can counteract some of those feelings. Therapy can be a bright spot amid all the stress and change, something to look forward to, to make you feel grounded, and to give you the tools to manage everything going on. I always add a little extra session to my uh, therapy routine uh, around these times for many, many reasons. And, you know, it always helps. I always feel good. And, you know, and it's true. It's something to look forward to to kind of get all of that stuff out uh, out of your brain and into somebody else's. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Find your bright spot this season with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash smartlist today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash smartlist. Thanks to Helix for supporting Smartless. As you know, we've talked a lot about these mattresses, how great they are, the best sleep ever. I got the Helix Dusk Lux mattress. It's incredible. I lay down, I go night night real fast. The Helix lineup offers 20 unique mattresses, including the award-winning Lux Collection, the newly released Helix Elite Collection, a mattress designed for big and tall sleepers, and even a mattress made just for kids. All right, so the Helix Elite Collection, it includes six different mattress models, each tailored for specific sleep positions and firmness preferences. Nervous about buying a mattress online? Don't be. The Helix Sleep Quiz takes into account your individual sleep preferences to match you and your partner with the perfect mattress for you. And your personalized mattress is shipped straight to your door, free of charge. Don't want to take my word? Helix Sleep has over 12,000 five-star reviews. Helix is offering 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash smartless. This is their best offer yet, and it won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. By supporting Helix, you're allowing them to support the show. Go purchase your Helix and thank us later for your best night's sleep. Helix.com slash smartless. And now back to the show. By playing offensive line first, do you have, uh, do you have sympathy for the offensive lineman that once you became a running back power back, (laughs) you start running into the backs of those (laughs) offensive linemen. Do you remember the days when running backs used to do that to you? I'll bet it hurts. 
<laughs> no, nah, man, to be honest with you, my, I, 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 I take care of my offensive linemen. And one of the things that I don't do is I don't run into the back of them. <laughs> I'd rather, if I, if I see a pile up or something like that, I'd rather, you know what I mean, bounce yeah. outside and yeah. run into a defender than hit my offensive lineman in the back. Is that, is that something that offensive linemen do, do complain about? Hell yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it's like, damn, pick your eyes up. Because they feel like, hey, look, I'm doing my job. I'm right. running this dude out of there and you running into my back. If you want to hit yeah. somebody, hit yeah. one of they players. The play, guy with the other guys. color on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for real, for real. Yeah. During the, the, the um, well, was work harder during football or is work harder now with the acting? You know, because <sighs> the, the hours in acting can be, you know, it's usually 12 hours. Um, and sometimes that hard work is simply trying to manage boredom, um, because n <laughs> yeah. no one, there's no, no two people that are working at the same time. And concentration um, though, when you're when it's called, right? Yeah. yeah. Or, or was, or is the football harder because of, you know, of all the obvious parts of it, the traveling and the strenuousness and. Well, see, the thing was, uh, you know, the traveling meetings, uh, you know, practiced games, being able to take care of my body, uh, you know, making sure I don't lose my mind. Uh, <laughs> that that became like second nature. That was more so like just my walk in life. And then with this, uh, you know, with, you know, going over into, I guess you would call it entertainment, it's more of like a challenge to me. So I'm not looking at it as... Um, is it hard or is it strenuous? It's more so like I want to understand it. Yeah, I want to. I want to get a. I want to get a understanding for this the way that I did for when I was playing my sport. Mm -hmm. But uh, but ultimately, if I'm just looking at it from a time management point, when I when I lock in for football, I had to lock in for eight months out the year. That was yeah. just what it was, right. regardless. And why? And why is it? Why? Why is it important to you? Just out of curiosity, like, do you have? Have you always had this thing in the back of your head? That's like, you know what? I want to stretch this muscle in my head about this this uh, <laughs> acting thing or this artistic kind of side of me. No, it's just that. Uh, realistically, I I don't want to be bad. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. I mean, shit. I mean, you know, you you yeah. hear about it all the time. Like, for individuals after their first career, they go and get into something else and it kind of don't pan out for them. Right. But in the same breath in which they you know, damn, he was a great football player or he was a good football. However you view me as a football player, you're not going to say I was bad unless no. I no. done something to your team. Right, then, right. Then maybe I'm shitty to you, but otherwise, you know what I mean? But otherwise, <laughs> you're going to say, you know what I mean? He, he brought something to the game and then, you know what I mean? Going into yeah. my second career, motherfuckers see me on T like, Oh, you know what? He ain't bad. He did right. a, yeah. He did a good job. So like, challenge, like it's almost like a challenge. Like a, you, you enjoy the challenge of it. Yeah, probably. I could say that. What about sure. what about the what about the gym? I imagine the gym would have been a big part of every day during your football career. Is it this? Are, are you? Uh, what, what's what's the amount of hours you're doing in the gym uh, per week? <laughs> to be honest with you, that was probably the place where I spent the least. Oh, <laughs> really? Work at? Okay, I mean, you got to think about it. it if you, well, my career, I played in the league, what, 12, 13 years, and then you got to think college was another three, high school, four, in yeah. the little league, I got about three in. So you, 20 plus years of doing the same shit, you got to think like, all right, I got to figure out a way to do some other shit in order to stay in shape or to get my body right. So then, I mean, you start getting creative. Yeah. And I mean, you know, I, I would say, realistically maybe two maybe three times in the gym a week and it ain't to do like you know like you see the body be like pumping all this weights and all that shit I mm -hmm. and it might be just to get a stretch you know what i mean or to wow. utilize the swimming pool but or just see who's in the steam yeah <laughs> yeah that yeah. should work too sign a steam room for sure uh, but so i have like a i have a two-parter marshawn like so uh -oh. when when you were playing uh when you were playing football, was there a person or a moment that made you want to, that kind of clicked your brain into, what if I did this, you know, expanded into entrepreneurial stuff? And what if I, was there a person that you're like, gosh, I really admire the way he handled his career after football or during football? Or was there a moment? And, and the second part is, 
what is your favorite or most rewarding entrepreneurial effort so far? <laughs> All right. Well, the first part is uh, before I before I even knew about money or anything, because it wasn't like that was something I came from. Um, I remember they was having these what is the financial advisors coming to mm-hmm. uh, coming to the facility and you know get a spiel. You know what I mean, and you can you know choose a financial advisor that way. That was the way in which we met financial advisors. So, mm-hmm. oh, so the team brings people in to talk to players and and sort of help them kind of figure out. That's what good, do. actually. Yeah, the the uh, player personnel, like you know, the guy who looks after yeah after the players on a more personal level. They'll bring in individuals who they know maybe f- through dealings with or maybe got introduced by another player. But I remember the first time he, my financial advisor came in and uh, he came in there and he was talking and <laughs> shit, I had this thing where I could go to sleep stand, I could go to sleep standing straight up. <laughs> and so he came in and he started talking all the blah, 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 and I fell asleep. Yeah, I know. Up. It goes in one ear out the other. Man, wow. Shit, it didn't go in no ear. I'm asleep, <laughs> dead to the world. Yeah, yeah. And he make a, uh, he, he don't say nothing. So as he finishing up and he, you know what I mean, kind of come to and up on the board, I see all these names. And these are names of NFL players who, I, you know, I thought if you play in the NFL, you like, the richest person in the world. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at looking at all these names and I'm saying like, you know, they got a number on the side to the right of that name and another column. And I'm like, damn, like fuck, they got all this money. Mm-hmm. And then at the end of it, you know, we go through like three slides and I'm talking about maybe some of the most notable names in football. And at the end he say, all bankrupt. And I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, no money. I'm like, no, nah, hell no. Nah. Right. Now I'm up. Yeah. But now it's presentation. <laughs> now I'm awake. Yeah. So I'm like, hey, hold on. Uh, What you mean they bankrupt? Like, yeah. you know, I've seen some of the names of individuals who, you know, I look up to. Like, no, nah, what the fuck? So after he said, man, you slept through my whole meeting. I said, yeah, I did. I, you know what? My bad, but. But can you start from the I beginning again? The part where you said all my all of these players up here is broke now. Like, what the fuck is going on? And the number on? next to them of the millions in debt they are. Yeah. Man, and I'm like, how do I not become yeah, one of them? Yeah, good for you. Good yeah. for you. Well, you know what, Marshawn? First of all, you can't go to sleep in my meeting. I'm like, how do you look? Right. Right. Quit bringing up old shit. We talking about moving forward. Was there what? What was early on one of the if you if you did make like a just foolish you know, uh, purchase. Do you remember like one of the <laughs> dumbest things you've ever bought? You said one of the dumbest things I ever bought. Like when you first start out, you're like, oh, I got an extra, you know. Did you ever buy an animal that should probably be in a zoo? <laughs> yes, I have. But that didn't come, that, that wasn't Did really? early on. That was after everything was said. Oh, okay. really? What, and what kind of animal was this? I bought a monkey. A monkey? A monkey. You what did kind, really? I've, I've uh, always wanted a yeah. monkey. What kind of monkey? A red hand tamarind. Is that true? Did you really buy one? Yeah, about as big as my hand. Lil Pimp was his name. Oh, my God. (laughs) Lil Pimp. That's L-I-L apostrophe? Man. (laughs) Nah, no apostrophes. Is this the kind that throws stuff at you? (laughs) Nah, he don't throw no shit at you. Now, he will get the the yelling at you, though. He'll yell. Really? Is he still with us? Hell yeah. No, 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 no. See, they got a a short uh, lifespan. Yeah, I was always nervous. I wouldn't want to get that, that like a monkey would come and like end up like rip, ripping my arms and my balls off or something. Yeah. <laughs> or, or my face, he was, like, eat he my was face. about as big as my hand, about as big as my hand. Uh-huh. Yeah, and I mean this that little motherfucker was fascinating. Oh my god, he he did some of the some of the most crazy shit I've ever seen. Before. Do you have to get a trainer for that, or do you train him yourself? No, nah, they. To be honest with you, he really, he really cool though. Like I oh, mean, so as they far come, as, they come trained. No, nah, they don't. I won't say that. But as far <laughs> as like, I mean, he's so little. Like if he take his shit somewhere, it's like, sure. like, like damn, is that rat? Like rat yeah, shit? Or right. like, uh huh. Oh, he's so, so tiny. So it ain't like there's no messy ass shit like that. Though. Never a diaper on Lil Pimp. Nah, man, we wasn't, <laughs> we wasn't confining him, man. Lil Pimp was, he was, hey, man, he was a real true one. Uh, he was a true. Lil Pimp. R.I.P. Lil Pimp. <laughs> R.I.P. Lil Pimp. But there was a few, uh, I mean, there was a lot of guys that, you know what I mean, I started to see turn, uh, you know, like, used to watch uh, OJN movies, uh, 
Jim Brown in movies. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you know, just to to see them being able to do it, it gave like, oh, it's an opportunity there to do that. And then I mean, yeah. you know, throughout the league, you know, you had players who, um, you know, get into investments and like, hey, man, you know, I'm working with this company, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like, you doing well? Like, oh, yeah. You know, I'm an outreach person. And I'm like, oh, okay, outreach. Like, well, I mean, you know, I don't really like people like that, but for the, for the simple fact that I'm seeing you being able to be on a level of professionalism even after you're done playing football, you know, I kind of got inspired by that. And I wanted to see what was actually out there. And a lot of this shit that I that I did learn or that I did get into, it, it, it basically all started off like a joke, kind of like, you know, damn, well, see if they'll let me get ownership. Right. Oh, okay. And then it's like, okay, yeah, you put a couple dollars up and they give you some ownership. Like, oh, all right. Yeah, you did that. You did that with like the with the Seattle Kraken. Yeah. You got ownership in that. You know, uh, uh, Sean, you might not know this. Uh, Marshawn's like part owner of a bunch of uh, sports teams, including the NHL Seattle Kraken. Really? Uh, Marshawn and I did this thing with, with for soccer for the World Cup last year. And then, like, <laughs> like two weeks into it, he sends me this sweatshirt from the Oakland Roots, and I go, "What's?" And he goes, "Yeah, this is this MLS two team that I, I co own." And I go, "We've been talking about soccer every day for two weeks, and you're only telling me now that you're an owner of a team." That's but he's got all these pieces of these teams, which is so so cool. Very cool. Very uh, savvy. Yeah, no kidding. Like team ownership. That's that's where it's at. Yeah. Yeah, man. Just trying to try to trying to position myself. I mean, I have one, I have one thousand dollars to uh, invest in a team can i see look you just a little bit too late we just did a yeah. round where oh, uh okay. yeah. you could have bought into uh that's his nickname too late too late john hayes <laughs> <laughs> you could have bought into the too uh late, to hayes. the oakland roots we just raised uh two million uh oh. in oakland more so like you know my problem. team my team my city it's something big going on within the bay area just because you know within the last what Five years, we done lost what the Raiders, the Warriors, and the A's. And I just, I think I just heard the A's is yeah. gonna be leaving too. So wow, yeah. Why don't you start? Why don't you, why don't you start doing a show like uh, like our friends Rob and Ryan, and uh, just mm -hmm. have cameras following you around? You go visit all the teams that you own pieces of. That'd be a good show. Yeah, that's, that would that, be a good great. show. Actually, that's a good idea. <laughs> Thank it's, you. It's not a bad idea. Or a podcast. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and we'll we'll produce it through Smartless Media. Yeah, we will. Great. Look, I mean, we just made some money. Right. Well, that was why I came on here. I'm trying to That's see the blueprint. There we go. Let's do Let's that, Let's get Marshall. a podcast going with you popping around and visiting on the teams that you own. I want to hear locker room speeches. I want to hear play-by-play. -play. <laughs> yeah. There's yeah. all kinds of things we can yeah. do. Wait, wait a second. I, wanted, I was going to ask you about locker room speeches because you worked with some great coaches. You worked with great players. You got to know that Marshawn's uh, quarterback when he was at Cal was uh, none other than Aaron Rodgers. And then his quarterback, yeah. while he it was a pro for most of his career, was Russell Wilson, two of the all-time great quarterbacks. The coach was, was uh, uh, for a long time, was Pete Carroll in Seattle. Uh, I mean, you've been – it's funny. It feel, I feel like sometimes, like, great players and, and, and talents are attracted to each other, and you got in with uh, – you were with a lot of talented people. Um, what was your relationship like with, with coaches? Well, specifically, like, Pete Carroll, but, but coaches in general through college and then into the pros. <laughs> early, early on in my career, uh, like from I'm gonna go like this: Pop Warner High School. It was easy because all mm -hmm. the coaches was you know from my neighborhood. They understand how to speak to me, uh, understand how to get the most out of me. Then going to college, uh, considering I because I ain't grow up with no father in the household, so going to college and then I have. I mean, in Oakland at this time, probably 90% uh, black. I got a white head coach, and this motherfucker don't got no filter. And I'm talking about maybe one of the most, uh, how could I say that? At the time, I thought, like, I regretted it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, man, this motherfucker racist. I can't do nothing right. And then it was like, all of a sudden, it just clicked for me, like, oh, shit, nah, I ain't not racist. It's, this dude was preparing me for going to the league and what I was about to go through in the real world. Knowing where I'm coming from, you know I mean, I was, I was basically trapped in a box. And he was opening my mind to shit that I didn't even know exist. 
coaching was something that I didn't take, you know, lightly. Like, man, fuck you. How you going to tell me what to do? Like, motherfucker, you ain't playing. You ain't, you know what I mean? And yeah. then I, the, the running back coach that I had when I was in college, I found out he played DB. And I'm like, how the fuck you going to tell me how to be the greatest running back and your motherfucking ass played DB? Didn't yep. make sense to me. But learn, but what it did was it it taught me to it taught me to learn from from individuals from different perspectives. Mm -hmm. He knew what it looked like as a running back, right? Coming downhill at a defensive back. Oh, interesting. He didn't know what it looked like as a running back running down right. a defensive back. So he's able to tell me when he tell me, Marshawn, right here, square your shoulders up. He knew that. DBs don't want to tackle running backs. No. <laughs> so make him make a business decision. Make him stick his head through his shoulder pad. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Make him wiggle his head through yeah. his shoulder pad. It doesn't work. You know what I mean? It doesn't work. But I wasn't, Only in the movies. I wasn't, it hurts. Yeah, I wasn't paying attention to that early on. But like I said, when I figured it out, okay, this shit makes sense now. We'll be right back. Smartless gets support from Mint Mobile. Ever felt bill-induced anxiety, that looming cloud of stress that hangs over you? We get it. No one enjoys the relentless cycle of big monthly payments. I don't know who enjoys it. Who? Raise your hand if you enjoy it. You, nobody has their hands up. If you're looking for a wallet-friendly solution for your phone bill, Mint Mobile is the way forward. Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just 15 bucks a month. All plans come with unlimited talk and text and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. By going online only and eliminating the traditional cost of retail, Mint Mobile passes significant savings on to you. Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash smartless. That's mintmobile.com slash smartless. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month and let them know we sent you by going to mintmobile.com slash smartless. Smartless is sponsored by ADT. ADT self-setup features everything from motion sensors to Google Nest cams with no long-term contracts. Isn't that great? Easily install the ADT self-setup security system at your convenience. No heavy-duty tools are needed. And if you need help, don't call me. ADT can provide virtual assistance along the way. ADT self-setup grows, moves, and adapts as your needs change. You can add more products at any time, and your system easily moves wherever life takes you. It also features Nest Cams that can tell the difference between a person, an animal, a vehicle, or with the Nest doorbell, even a package. Plus, when every second counts, you can trust ADT's 24-7 professional monitoring. You can view video of an alarm event and verify or cancel an alarm with just a tap. When the most trusted name in home security adds the intelligence of Google, you've got a home with no worries. Go to ADT.com today or call 1-800-ADT-ASAP. Google, Nest Cam, Nest Doorbell, and Nest Aware are trademarks of Google LLC. All right, back to the show. It seems to me that a guy like Pete Carroll, does he coach? I feel like a lot of his speeches are really esoteric, like really out there kind of like, like are they are they football related or does he make a lot of like big sort of inspirational speeches about life and stuff? Is that, am I right on that? That he, I fuck with Pete. I won the championship with him, but as far yeah. as the speeches and all that, you know, I would, I would leave out of his meetings. <laughs> Did you do any standing up sleeping in the Pete Carroll meetings? <laughs> nah, I would sit down sleeping in that motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> I, wanted my, I wanted my good rest. You dig but in nah, there. I would, yeah. yeah, I would, I would. You know, after a while, they just started to become uh, repetitive for me. Right. Uh -huh. And then I'm not a guy who you need to like. Ah, rah, 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 mm -hmm. to get me ready to go and bust somebody. Cause I'm already at a disadvantage because that's what that's what my lifestyle was. So I don't need that. That extra shit, that shit just gonna make me upset, make me like, all right, bro, you talking too much. Like, I don't wanna talk. I just wanna bust motherfuckers' head and you keep <laughs> talking is you damn near talking me out of going to go bust a motherfucker's head. Now I wanna let them do something to you because you talk too much type uh -huh. situation. Mm -hmm. So I don't need I don't need rah rah rah. And right. he was, you know, that type of guy. So 
you know, anytime I could eliminate the rah rah rah, I would I would do that. But I mean, you know, I done had some great coaches along the way. Uh, you know, men who who I feel has taught me, you know, to stand on principle, morals, and values, which I feel that that shit is a thing of the past. Like that shit is a myth. If you hear somebody standing on principle, morals, and values, like for real, he did. Like he must be hella old or something. Like that ain't <laughs> something right now that is looked at as a good thing. And mm. they taught me that that walk to walk with conviction as a man. And you know, I, I hold conversations with them till this day. Still, you know, what I mean, contact with them and reach out to me, reach out to them, check on them. But I mean, you know, it's 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 a funny thing because I mean. Like I said, from my mindset before on the coach, like was like, what you talking about right now, that shit don't concern me to, okay, now nah, these are individuals who have lives, families, and they actually walk with a purpose. And I feel that, you know what I mean? Once I opened up my mind to that, thanks to Coach Tefford, to seeing them for more than just telling me, okay, Marshawn, you got to run through the B gap. You got to run through the C gap or you got to cut back right here. And I took it for more than what it was worth. Shit started to open up for me. Um, and it was it was, it was was a big thing for me. And, you know what I mean? It's funny you talk about Pete Carroll because at the time, he had got another coach over there, uh, Tom Cable. And that was like my, my connection. Tom Cable and... Um, and Coach Sherman, those were my connections to the team. That was how I got the information about mm -hmm. what was going on because, you know, Pete was a little bit, he was he was too much for me. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you wake, I'm telling you, you come in at, because I, I had weird-ass hours when you start talking about the gym and shit. Like, I would come into the locker room maybe at 4 o'clock in the morning and, you know, I'd go do some extra work, sign a steam room, you know, maybe a little bike swimming or whatever. And it'd be about five o'clock in the morning, and I'll see Pete coming into the office, and he, hey, buddy, hey, how you doing? It's gonna be a great day today. Like, hey, hey, and he'd be like, what the <laughs> fuck? Like, hey, look, it's five o'clock in the morning, bro. Cool out. And you're like, uh -huh. hold on, man. I just seen this motherfucker didn't leave out of the facility until like 11, 12 o'clock at night. And he's back at five. And he was leaving. Hey, buddy, I'm going home. You can have a great night. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Make sure you're ready on time. And, uh, and you're like, hold on, this mother. <laughs> Bro, this motherfucker. And then it ain't no difference when you see him at breakfast. Uh -huh. He come in at meeting the same way. You see the motherfucker at lunch the same way. You see him on a practice field. You see him after practice and the, and the meetings after that. And when he going home, he the same way. And best believe, if you dare to see him come in in the morning, it's the same. It's like, man, this motherfucker got to be a robot. <laughs> <laughs> Marshawn, tell me, do I remember this right? Did you spend an entire season not talking to the media? A few seasons. What you mean, a season? It was a few of them. <laughs> Where you refused to talk to the media, right? What'd they do? What'd they do to make you take that position? What they did was they showed me who they was. Uh, they mm -hmm. showed me who they was. And the thing, like I said, I started to stand on principle morals and values, and because I mean, you know, I, like I said, I, I was I was raised different. I seen things through different lenses, and then I listened. They used to come into the rooms and they tell all oh, the media this, that, and the third. They're not your friend, blase, blase. And then they'll double back and say, "You gotta remember, no press is bad press." What the fuck? Mm. So that was a conflict for me. And then you had a situation where it was a point in my career where everybody wasn't fucking with me, where I was doing shit that you would think a uh, 20-year-old with, you know what I mean, with a couple dollars in his pocket, some mistakes that would be made. And it would go from, I'll be here one day, hey, Marshawn, you're oh, your greatest, uh, this, that, and the third, oh, yeah, yeah, he, 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 he. Mm. And then I'd get in trouble, and then it was like, oh, I knew that motherfucker was a thug. Oh, that motherfucker <laughs> ain't shit. Oh, fuck him. He needs to be in jail, not on the football. And then it was all this shit started to... And I'm like, damn, this the same motherfucker who I just seen last week was just telling me how much of a good run. And, you know what I mean? He looked forward to seeing what comes out next week. And then, motherfucker... They turn on you. Motherfucker yeah. make a mistake. Yeah. Or 
a motherfucker got caught doing some shit he shouldn't have been doing. Mm -hmm. But the thing was, I seen how judgmental they was. And the yeah. thing was, all right, when y'all not recording and doing all of that shit, it's he, he, and I'm, hold on, you motherfuckers is too confusing. It's, it's too confusing to try to find out who you individuals truly are. So in my terms, instead of, I'm thinking like, you know what I mean? If we was back in the hood, nigga, I'd beat your ass. Like, right. nigga, I'd roll your ass up. I'd take your camera, all that. And I was like, oh, no, you can't. You can't. You can't do that. You can't act that way. So it was more so like, hey, if you ain't got nothing nice to say, don't say nothing at all. Yeah. Now, these individuals who, you know, talking big shit about me, I could care less what anybody else think about me. And if this is my way to get people to understand where I'm coming from and X, Y, and Z, nah, fuck that. Who I need to deal with, I'll talk to them individuals, let them know what's up. And then I just go about my business. I didn't feel I needed to broadcast it to the. To yeah, that makes world. sense. Well, sadly, we live we live in times where where uh, obviously where where sort of negativity sells. I, I I've seen movie reviews that start off with a, with like a negative headline, and then you read it, and it's like not a bad review. And I'm like, oh, you just wanted people to click on the yeah. shit, and the, people just mm -hmm. want that kind of shit, which which sucks. And it's not not positive. I will say this: one of the great positive things you do, I know, Marshawn, you've got your your fan first family foundation, uh, which is pretty awesome and i know you've been like doing a lot of giving back through that you want to talk about that for a little bit how that came to be <laughs> well yeah that's probably the longest standing uh, uh business that i got and probably the i mean that's i started that immediately uh well i'm not gonna say i we started that immediately after i uh decided to uh enter the draft and i mean since then uh we just been on a tear like I mean, it didn't matter. Wherever help was needed, we tried to fill that gap. And uh, and what specifically, like, what's the mission? Like, who you got? Who you trying to help? Like, what's the the main? The 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 inner city youth. Well, uh, we looked at uh, a lot of a lot of the a lot of the kids, um, you know, from our neighborhood. They don't get a fair shot. Mm -hmm. So we just tried to, you know, what I mean, even it up a little bit by, you know. Um, supplying some of the some of the needs that they needed in order to you know what i mean be able to you know compete with you know somebody from um a higher uh background or education right. level and i mean it you know it just started as a football camp but then it turned into architect camps like we do an architect camp for the kids over at uh at cal uh shout out to cal for letting us utilize they um Facilities we do, you know, reading programs, math programs, uh, entrepreneur programs. We got Shopify uh, supplied us with some shit, and we do beast mode of business where they create their own business and you know able to uh, have it go live on Shopify um, uh, site. I mean, anything that you could think of, from coding to fucking building a shoe creating clothing lines, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Teaching them ways in order to, you know, think outside the box of what, you know what I mean? The five, we call it the 580 and the 880. But to think outside of that and show them many ways, like with the production company, everybody think like you got to be the individual that's on the screen to make their money. Like they don't know that there's a guy back there holding a mic, that there's right. a guy holding a camera, that you got grips, that you got motherfucking uh, ads and all these, like all these other things. Like I said, I'm watching y'all right now to see. I uh, I see two people on this boat. Like they don't they don't know this. All they see is they're gonna see the clip go from me talking my bullshit to Will to YouTube, and that's all they're gonna see and say, "Oh, I want to do that." Not mm -hmm. knowing it's a whole team that made all of yeah, this. Yeah, there's shit actually a life. group of people that are making it. The people on screen are just in it. You know? Jason, you said this once, and I love this. Uh, everybody on set, when you go on a on a movie, everybody from from catering to uh, background oh, holding man. to locations to team to driver, you know, everybody's a filmmaker, right? Yeah, everybody mm -hmm. on that set is a filmmaker, and it's what makes There's it. No super. one there that doesn't need to be. That's there. exactly yeah. right. I I love Marshawn. I love that you're doing that, and 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 it doesn't surprise me because uh, I know you know I got to know you're such a great guy, and um, 
man, I'm just, it's so great to be able to talk to you. We've, I'm, we've held you here too long, kind of held you hostage, but I just want to, I could. Uh, no, nah, I told you, you might, you, you, you folks, Brad, you, you good in the hood, man. Anytime. <laughs> so <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's good. I had no problem with that. Uh, Marshawn, you're the best, man. Thank you. Continued success. Thank my you, friend. Marshawn. You're just, you're just no always, always you. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll talk soon. Thanks for being Thank here. Thank you, Marshawn. All right. All good, man. Y'all have a blessed day, man. Nice meeting you yeah. too. Thank you, Marshawn. What a sweet fella. What a great guy, huh? Yeah. How cool is it that here's a guy who has not just a football career, but he wins a uh, Super Bowl <laughs> and he goes to the Pro Bowl and, he, and he's a first team all pro. Does every, like every basically thing he can do as a, as an NFL player. Superstar. And then has this retires three times, by the way, he retired because he kept coming back. And, uh, and then he retires and he turns, he turns all that into, becomes this entrepreneur and he goes yeah. into, it goes into the arts and goes into all this stuff. And I'm like, this dude is unbelievable. He truly is. He's gone beast mode through life, not yeah, just on yeah. the football field. Yeah, yeah. He's just gone beast mode into everything he does. And I have so much respect for the guy. He's such a cool dude. It yeah. sounds like he didn't need to. He held on to his money and he probably doesn't need to continue working so hard, but that's just part yeah. of his makeup. Yeah. 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 Right. He's, I love that too. He's such a savvy dude and he and he's just so cool. And I, again, I should point out, he's such a uh, good, good person too. Um, so I'm lucky, uh, I'm lucky that he came and did it. I'm lucky that I know him. Yeah, he seems very kind. Yeah. He's is very kind. Uh, oh, did you guys see um, uh, Jason's headline, the, the meltdown thing? No. Yeah, yeah. The, the little stuff you guys chopped together and yeah. and, and put on the show. It's like it's so, Bateman so, has meltdown on. But I mean, it's what are you just talking about. No, no it's, it. it's 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 no, no. I know, but it it the, to your point earlier, you said in the in the interview here that people will find a headline just so you can click through. Yeah, click um, right. And the fact that I said in it that I had a full meltdown. They were able to use that, oh, put quotes oh around it, and then no. say Bateman has, quote, full meltdown on podcast. So, so it's dumb. It's You're the headline kidding. they need. Yeah, it's, it's, so But it's dumb. good. It's good press for us, I guess. I, I haven't <laughs> looked on the internet, and I'm so stymied by that. Well, you'd, you'd need a Google, a Google alert on Smartless oh, and oh, or me. Oh. Hmm. I'm going to get one. I'm going to look into that. I might lease one. You're going to lease a Google alert? Yeah, what does it cost you to get into one of those? <laughs> well, the rental's pretty steep, but... Uh, uh, <laughs> um, oh, you know what, though? Maybe, you could, maybe, maybe you I could, could... Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, Chuck. No, you go ahead. We're going to do it for I was going to say, gonna... maybe you could, if you can't, pull, you can't afford a full subscription, maybe you could do a bi-monthly! <laughs> bi-monthly! Bi Why are you holding your stomach? Bye. You have an Abe Froman t-shirt on. That's pretty I do, good. Yeah. Sausage King of Chicago. That's right. Jason, say bye. 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 Smart. Smart. Less. Smartless is 100% organic and artisanally handcrafted by Michael Grant Terry, Rob Armjarv, and Bennett Barbaco. Smart. Less. Our next episode will be out in a week wherever you listen to podcasts, or you can listen to it right now early on Amazon Music, or early and ad-free by subscribing to Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts or the Wondery app. Hey listeners, it's Mr. Ballin here, and I'm here to tell you about my brand new podcast. It's called Mr. Ballin's Medical Mysteries. Why Medical Mysteries? Well, we've all been there. Turning to the internet to self-diagnose our inexplicable pains, debilitating body aches, sudden fevers, and strange rashes. Though our minds tend to spiral to worst-case scenarios, it's usually nothing. But for an unlucky few, these unsuspecting symptoms can start the clock ticking on a terrifying medical mystery. Like the unexplainable death of a retired firefighter whose body was found at home by his son, except it looked like he had been cremated. Or the time when an entire town became ill with nausea and chills, and the local doctor chalked it up to being food poisoning until people started jumping from buildings and seeing tigers on their ceilings. Each terrifying true story will be sure to keep you up at night. Follow Mr. Ballin's Medical Mysteries wherever you get your podcasts. Prime members can listen early and ad-free on Amazon Music.